made a have coffee with me video in quite a while. Sorry. The year caught me by surprise with all the travel and how overwhelming it's been and how unexpectedly challenging and difficult it would be. And I was prepared not to make any more of these for a while. But considering the current state of affairs in our country, I'm in America, and our Supreme Court is dumping a bunch of uh, rulings and rolling back of our rights and stuff. And, you know, it's 2022 with a lot of uh, communicable disease outbreaks and things that we've eradicated that are coming back. And, you know, life in the early 2020s that are historic and unprecedented. But I'm here to talk about you and mental health and wellness and taking care of yourself and laughter. And I hear you saying, okay, you know, enough is enough right now. We just want to escape and watch mindless YouTube videos and TikToks and stuff. And honestly, like, right now is not the time for your bullshit. Like, things are serious. Clearly, you think you're important and that you've got to make these videos that you can somehow help. And, like, we don't want to do work right now. This is ridiculous and you need to stop because things are serious. Like, right now, we need to be focusing on what's going on because this is serious. And, and you need to just... Like, not upload videos and stuff. I hear ya. You're who I'm talking to then. And any of you that are having a hard time. Because, regardless of what's going on at the higher levels of the decision makers and the power people, what's happening in our daily lives right now for some of you, nothing's changing yet. It's the prediction of future changes and what this is going to mean. And I want to remind you that <laughs> my world fell apart in 2008. Literally fell apart. It wasn't that decisions were being made at higher levels. It's that my actual world was falling apart. And it continued to just get worse and worse and worse and worse. And I went from a middle class living in rural, down on the coast, America with my curtains matching my couch to losing my marriage and my mental health and all of my money living in North Georgia, barely surviving and going to food banks to get food. Like, and all that happened in over a two year period. And I was a financial leper. I went from owning three houses that I was flipping, you know, and remodeling or whatever and selling for a profit. And that's how I was making a living to having the worst credit rating you can have having filed bankruptcy and no one would touch me and I didn't have the cash either and $5 would mean whether I could actually take my car somewhere because I live somewhere where there's no mass transit. It was, it was hard. And then, you know, you know my story of having to get on benzos or whatever. I'm telling you all that to tell you 
that no matter what's happening to you, I've been there. The falling out of, of finding out that whatever paradigm you were a part of was bullshit. And watching it all crumble around you and go, okay, if I don't believe in that anymore, if that was a lie all along, then what's real? Until I just, there was nothing real anymore. Nothing was true anymore for me. And I've come out the other side now in a place where I think I can help you today. And you're not going to like it. The worse things seem, the more important it is that you actually learn to take care of yourself even more and find more beauty and reasons to put a smile on your face, even if it's just for a moment. And that flies in the face of how you may be feeling right now, that things are serious right now. And when things would get hard and I would see people uploading, like going, acting like life was just going on and uploading, you know, happy or joyful videos. Like that's okay for a while, but once things just get really, really bad, like we don't have time for that, you know, like. And what that is code for, let me interpret that for you. All that stuff I said at the beginning of this video, what that is code for is, I feel like I'm under threat. I feel like my safety is under threat. I feel like I'm being controlled. I feel like my future and my children's future is uncertain. I feel like I'm losing all of my money, which is access. I'm afraid that the things that I need are no longer going to be there these are very serious things. Therefore, I need to stop having any joy in my life and I need to focus on the pain so that I can problem solve so that I can protect my future. And that's a fallacy because we were never designed to live in long-term pain and fear. Our ancestors had moments of intense fear, followed by quickly getting things sorted and then back into some kind of routine. And then life went on. It is unusual for humans to have access to news and information from around the world 24 hours a day. And our minds don't know what to do with that. Evolutionarily, we have not evolved anywhere in our brains to put that. The scope of that level of information. We don't know what to do with it. Our brains are still very simple. And that is, is my life in danger right now? Is it an early spring thaw? And so the meat has gone bad. Like we don't have any food situation? Or is this oh my God, we just had a runner come back and say there's a warring tribe on the way. And in the next couple of hours, our lives are going to be under threat. The, this is this. This is, the, this is the, the thing that our brains are wired for. Not news of concepts and ideas that could be threatening if certain situations happen potentially in months or years. That's just an unknown concept. We don't, we don't know that, that concept. And even if we did know that concept to say, okay, our ancestors tell stories of the past where if this particular pattern happens in the weather and the mountain does this thing, then in the next couple of years, we could be facing a flood. Therefore, we should pack up and move. Like it was a simple thing. I'm telling you this because not that I don't want you to be concerned. Not that I want you to just pretend like everything's okay. I'm going to give you actual coping skills. The real thing. 
that I already know works, that, that I've tried everything. I've tried the gloom and doom. I've tried going to bed. I've tried the panic attack thing. I've tried the medication thing. I've tried the problem solving thing. I've, I've tried it all and I know now what works. But you have to understand that you don't have a choice. If you don't do this, you're not gonna be okay because there's nothing you can physically do to fix the problem, but there are things you can do to help the problem. And then we want to discuss those things. First, you really need to be in a place where you don't want to just needlessly suffer over and over and watch this whole shit show go down and your mental health gets worse and worse and worse. Okay, that means you've got to disengage from what it feels like right now to be you, how lethargic you feel, how defeated and hopeless, how grieving and how heavy the weight feels, how insurmountable and heavy and low it all feels and how what comes with that is a lack of energy, focus, motivation, and all you wanna do is stay in bed and summon the minimal amount of energy to do the things that you have to do and maybe just go up on your meds. You, I can promise you where that's gonna take you when it's not a good place. It, it's very seductive. I know. This is what separates the true woke, the true spiritual, the true enlightenment, the true people who really are, quote, waking up, really are moving through ascension from people that just like to talk a lot but are going nowhere. And it's really this. This is where the work is. As seductive and heavy and dense as all that feels, you make the decision. However, that's not okay and it's not going to help me feel better or get well or get better and put me in a better place to have a better life and to do more good things. Therefore, regardless of how all that feels, I'm going to make some choices counter to that. And that is the difference. That's the difference. This is what it feels like. This is what I want to do. But this is what I need to do. And I want to do what I need to do. Because you're choosing mental health over sinking and powerlessness and pain. And so the rest of this video is going to be that. And if you don't want that and you can't do that and you think this is all bullshit and you're just caught up in fight or flight and you think that you don't have the ability and you think that there's nothing you can do and this is just too seductive to feel that way and you don't want to feel better you just want to go to bed and go watch bullshit like mindless tiktoks whatever then the rest of this video is not for you so you should go so the work is this it's going to feel weird and it's going to be counterintuitive to your brain because your brain is in fight or flight and that means that you are in the let's be serious, let's problem solve mode, right? And the idea of doing little things like nurturing yourself or even a joke or laughing or smiling like all that stuff seems superficial and your brain is actually really wired that way and it's telling you um, your, your life is in danger. You need to be running or you need to be fighting or you need to be making a tool like this is time to be serious you need to be doing something actively higher level more chaos more stress feeling like your brain's wired that way so all the things i'm about to tell you to do are going to feel weird and wrong 
but the path to actually being okay and mentally healthy and well and weathering storms and having a good attitude and being able to help others means rewiring your brain and going against what feels and doing what you know is, is the right thing to do. It's going to be uncomfortable. So the first things that you have to do is reckon with what's happening, right? And that means honoring the grieving, honoring the loss of all the systems that you were raised to believe were true and healthy and right and normal and good because we're watching them all fail around us. And rarely does anyone ever have to do that because our ancestors were taught, this is how you take an animal down, this is how you clean it, this is what the hide can be used for, this is how you make decorative beads out of bone. Like those structures don't fail, nature doesn't fail. Nature may shift or change, but the whole structure isn't bullshit. So our brains don't know what to do with when our whole structure and everything that we've been taught is failing, like the way that we elect people or how our governments are functioning or how an economic system supports everyone and works or how indigenous people have been treated and are currently being treated or the minorities and, and how they have been treated and, and what they're saying and what you're learning about that and what that may mean for you, whether you are a minority or not, and then your privilege and then finding out you thought you had it bad, but then you never did. And then like just insurance is a scam and, and whatever it is, schooling and, and the, the pharmaceutical industry and the food industry, whatever it is, this is a time of great reckonings. So let's honor that. You have to start out not by ignoring. This is not forced positivity here. This is going in and going, God, this really sucks. It hurts in my heart. Because aside from all the terror of what's happening and feeling powerless and out of control, it's loss. It's loss of security and loss of the fundamental structure of your universe. It's not unlike tripping for the first time and going, what the fuck even is reality? It can take you a long time to deconstruct that shit. Okay, so that's, that's that reality. But what about your concrete reality when it's all falling apart? This is an existential crisis and it's going to take you some time to just let it all go and grieve. Because it's one thing if you're going to be taking one away and replacing it with another and going, oh my God, I got to wrap my brain around this. We're not replacing it with anything. This is the slow motion falling apart, right? It, it, it hurts and it's sad because you may be tempted to look at 10 years ago when you were carefree, when the world was easier, when the bills weren't this bad, when you could run around and, and not worry about things and, and you were only concerned with X, Y, Z and whatever. The weight of the world wasn't on your shoulders. Indeed. It's sad to grow older. But we are not the first generation to do this. There have been weather patterns that have changed rapidly. There have been world wars. Can you imagine being in that generation? So, grieve it, feel it, know that it's sadness. It is pure sadness. It's just simple grieving. When you can honor that and actually sink into the grieving, you won't get depressed and stuck. Sadness actually has motion and it knows how to do that. Your body knows how to move sadness. Embrace the sadness. And if that means that you just are lethargic and can't do anything for a couple of days, then that's what we do. But it's, you've got to own the sadness, not the hopelessness, powerless, big depressive stuff. That's, that, that is, that is an escape mechanism to avoid the actual sadness. Sadness can be really painful because it means you're truly powerless. It's something you've just got to feel and let it go. Then, 
when you start to feel that moving and you feel like you're getting toward the end of the sadness, you're going to feel rage and anger. And you got to embrace that shit too. But, but... Anger can be destructive or constructive. And if you are used to raging with your pain, then you're going to need to be really careful with your anger. If you are used to pretending like anger isn't the thing and shoving it down, then you're just going to make yourself sicker. So what you do with the anger is you... Bang a drum. You've got to get a drum. If you don't own a drum, I think you should know by now. If you've been here for any amount of time, you got to have a drum. Drums go way back. And we're going to talk about drums. I'll make a video about drums. But drums help move anger. And I don't mean like you can't do something with your anger. Like anger's bad. I don't mean that at all. I mean to turn the volume down. Just to take the top off of that anger you got to find a drum and listen to drums I have a playlist of drums cultural drumming listening to drums and banging on things if you give it time just sink into the trance of it it will move the top off of that anger and then you need to actually do something with that anger because this is a very, very important part of you being able to move on to the next part, the mentally healthier part of it. And so what that means is, however you want to get involved, do you want to support your neighbors? Do you want to help set up a trading network locally with people so that you're no longer taking part in the corporate system and you buy and sell and trade with people locally and maybe you can get on your next door app and and start like a trading network do you want to get involved in politics can you write to a politician or make phone calls or set up like a phone bank or send emails out to people to say hey these are who your representatives are you should contact them do you want to choose violence and go somewhere and protest although protesting does absolutely nothing i would rather like to see you Get involved. Can you run for office? Should you do that? The point is, if there's a system that you feel powerless about, enter it at whatever level you do feel like you have the time, the ability, the means, and the power to do something in that at that level. If you don't have that kind of mental health and you don't have that kind of time, then make one phone call to a representative. Send one email to a representative. But getting online and raging at content creators is going to fuel the anger and just make it worse and make you feel more powerless and more helpless. Complaining to other people about it. These are bad ways to deal with this. Don't do that. Once you have gotten information and been able to act and do something with your anger, at this point, you're going to feel much less angry, much less powerless, and much less hopeless. And you will start to see that what I'm telling you here actually works and it's important. Now, here's the next part that's really hard. Instead of doom scrolling, and obsessing on it and going down these rabbit holes of TikToks and YouTubes and Facebook posts of how awful everything is and just continuing to soak up the news and the information over and over and over and over and spiraling with it. You're going to have to get very selective at this point about who and what you allow your eyes and your ears to be exposed to because it's not normal. So what that's going to look like then is if you do need to rest and be on your phone, then the minute that you see that they're talking about any of this negative stuff, you just move on to the next one until what you are consuming are things that are just 
run-of-the-mill stuff that doesn't have anything to do with these triggering events. A new recipe, even if you don't cook, that's interesting. I never knew you could use that spice that way. Some ceramics and painting ceramics or pouring molds for ceramics. Like, that's interesting. I didn't know that's how that thing was made. Any kind of how-to things. Stories that are uplifting. This is the hardest part. And it's not that you're sticking your head in the sand and not keeping up with the news. It's that you can get the news in certain ways that you get your information and then move on. I'm not saying limit your screen time. I'm saying be very careful about what you're consuming and what you're willing to listen to because people debating and talk shows and talking heads and news shows, they are beating a panicked horse over and over and over. And that's a horrible euphemism and I don't want to use that anymore. That's disgusting. It's attractive because you think it's going to help you move this. It's like it's like a, um, a lottery that you think you're going to win. Every time you think there's going to be new information that's going to make you feel hopeful and better and like there's something you can do. And, there, and that never comes. It never happens. It's not even an intermittent reward. Like there's nothing ever good about it. So I'm not saying don't don't scroll and don't be online, you know what I mean? So what you can do is there are different really calming video games that you can download that are easy and they have really calming music. And then there's video games you can play or like puzzle games you can play. And so what I do is I'll open TikTok. And I'll just quickly scroll past anything that's triggering and I'll watch the things that are decent or positive or uplifting or interesting. Then I'll switch to a video game, play that for 10 or 15, 20 minutes. Then I'll get up and load the dishwasher, right? And then maybe move to YouTube and catch up with my creators that I like and see if they've uploaded anything. And then I'll work for a little while and so I rotate in 10 or 15 minute intervals, depending on how bad of a mental health day I'm having. On a good mental health day, I can work for an hour and then I can work in the yard for an hour, work in the house, you know, with domestic stuff, run errands for two or three hours. They're in hour chunks, but when I'm not okay, they're in 10 and 15 minute chunks. So try to break up your viewing in 10 or 15 minute chunks with, and set a timer on your phone that you're just gonna go get the clothes out of the dryer and work for 10 minutes and then that's it. And you'd be surprised what you can accomplish in that amount of time, but it breaks up your doom scrolling. And then the hardest thing of all, you have to continue to take care of your body you have to shower or at least get a rag and clean your pits and privates. You have to be getting your minerals. Our water is dead and mineral deficient. And I talk about minerals and supplements all the time, but y'all, we don't live in the natural world anymore. We've raped and pillaged this earth until our food is no longer nutritious and our water is empty and dead. So we are mineral deficient in ways that we have never seen or been before. Water is supposed to be dense with minerals. That's where we get our minerals from. Go look up mineral deficiencies like magnesium deficiencies and the symptoms of it. I bet you've got every one of them. Potassium deficiencies, calcium deficiencies, selenium deficiencies. Those things get depleted when you're in fight or flight and stress mode. But also we're not replenishing them in our food and we're certainly not replenishing it in the water that we drink. I have a couple of things that I'm using, but today I'm actually going to get water because I found a natural spring that is 100% clean coming right out of the rocks in North Georgia. So I'm gonna go fill up about 50 gallons 
and start drinking that. But there's also a thing called shilajit, shilajit, It is a natural tree resin. And it's naturally got minerals in it and it's really sticky and thick, it's hard. And so what I do is I get my tea, I put the spoon in it and let it get hot, and then I stick it in here and it melts its way through it, and I stick some in my tea and let it melt and I drink it every single day. My point is that it is so easy to neglect because your body's telling you that when bigger, bigger, bigger things are threatening your life, now it's not the time to brush your teeth and nurture your little heart and drink your little teas, you know, and talk to people and love each other. Like, no, this is not that time. But the truth is nothing bad is happening to you right now. Right now, yes in your head, but the bills that I'm gonna to have to get up and pay here in a minute that I can't pay and the gas that I can't afford to go run the errands that I have to run. And like, I'm having to figure out what I'm gonna do with this 20 bucks. Like, how? I, I, need, I need it to be a hundred and it isn't. Like, that's real. Okay, I hear you, like I know that. But sitting here right now with me watching this, nobody's hitting you over the head. You're not on fire. You're not starving. You might be hungry. I've been there. I've missed a lot of meals to make sure my children ate. But even if you're hungry and, in your, and you're in a lot of pain, I'm in a lot of pain right now. Nothing bad is happening to you. This isn't. This is a reality check when your brain consumes too much or things are changing too rapidly for you to wrap your brain around it your brain just goes into awfulizing and making you think that bad things are happening to you right now. So one of the most important things for you to do is to go, oh wait, okay. <sighs> huh. And then here's the hardest thing of all that I'm gonna say that I need you to hear. What if your life could continue on as normal and none of this affects you? Now that is a bold statement. That is a privileged, arrogant statement. That is a, well, it must be nice to be you, but you're not in a minority and you have no idea how this is going to affect everyone. Now I'm well aware of all of those statements. I am well aware, I am in a minority, I'm also not in a minority, and I am also a very privileged person. And I've also been in, an, in some really, really shitty situations. All of those things are true. However, even all of those that are underprivileged and in minorities in every single way still have 90% of their days where everything is okay. It may not be the best living situation, food, water, or people around them, but we all have a life that we have adjusted to and that we are living that we can find normalcy in, however good or shitty it is. And I'm saying, what if as shitty as things seem to be around us and the people that we know that are currently suffering, how is it going to help the world or them or you? to deny yourself any sense of peace and goodness because others are suffering. How are you gonna be in a position to do any good or to help anyone if you can't get your shit together? I had to grieve for three days to get my shit together to sit down and make this for you. And if I helped you, it's because I took care of myself and told myself, as shitty as it seems to be in the decisions that are being made in the entire paradigm that's crumbling around me, what if I could live my life like it didn't affect me? What if it wasn't affecting me actually living my life day to day? 
because one, I'm menopausal, so I'm not reproductive, but I have children who are reproductive. But right now it's not affecting them because they are not actively doing the things that could cause them to be affected by it. But others are currently being affected by it that are having to make some hard decisions right now. But what if you could live your life so that whatever all of these decisions are that are being made, either you find a way to get the money to leave the country, you find a way to move to a different part of the world or in your country, you find a way to get out of a relationship or into a relationship or to run for office or a way to earn more money to get more access to more privilege. But what if you could find a way to live your life like none of this stuff is actually terrorizing you every day? You might be 99.9% .9 successful at that. Or 90% successful at that. Because when I look at all of the shit that happened to me from Katrina to filing bankruptcy to the panic attacks and to getting on benzos and to being suicidal. Still... Even within all that, I kept adjusting and finding many days where nothing bad was happening to me. My brain was attacking me. My mental health was happening to me, but nothing bad was happening to me. More bad things happened to me then than they do now because then I was so poor and broke that my car was so bad that it was breaking down every week because I was so malnourished I was having illnesses rapidly back to back because I my, my immune system couldn't recover. So for sure, more shitty things were happening to me than they are today. But still, 70 or 80% of the time, my life was okay every day. This is about looking at your actual day-to-day -day life and figuring out is it possible for me to take care of my mental health and take care of myself enough to do enough next right things and good things that I can actually change the course of events so that more better, predictable, healthier, good things are happening to me on a daily basis than if I choose this other path where I'm mired and I don't make good decisions and I don't take care of myself. Manifesting isn't just about magical, energetic things. It's also about practical things. There's a point where they meet and fuse, and some of it is just decisions you're making, which bring better luck and better outcomes so that you're, you look like you're manifesting good things, but really you're just taking care of yourself. There is a point where that crosses over into the energetics, and I have a course about that. It's free. You should take it. It's the, the Power of Amanita course. But we can definitely move things in our own direction if we do the bare minimum things, like taking the right supplements, eating better, cleaner food that we can afford and have access to and that we can get, and getting our supplements and drinking better water, eating as close to the land as we can and as clean as we possibly can. I realize you may have limits on that. Whatever those limits are, live as close to those limits as you can. And by not doom scrolling, and by focusing your anger in ways that you can, we're not done yet, by honoring the sadness and the grieving, these are very careful and specific ways that you really do change the course of your life so that as we continue to move forward through this great awakening and great reckoning and great shift and great ascension that we all are here for, you may be able to do it in a way that's not nearly as destructive or painful. And it could actually be enjoyable Now, I'm not saying that some of you are not going through some of the most horrific events of your life. Some of you absolutely are. And you may need to just do that until you get out of it and can get your feet under yourself and pick up here, right? Depending on where you are in all of this,
We are all on different journeys and different paths through this. Once you get to this point, then you've actually got to find a way to be content and at peace because you will. And sometimes that can be the hardest thing to feel like you're actually okay when you hear about someone's kid getting killed or somebody just lost their home and now they're homeless and they have children. Like, th these are unprecedentedly shitty times that we haven't seen in two or three generations. There can be survivor's guilt of why am I doing okay mentally and emotionally? Oh, because I'm choosing that. Yikes. How dare I take care of myself while other people, X, Y, Z, whatever. That is your trauma speaking. That is your narcissistic abuse. That is your bad relationships, upbringing, childhood, whatever, telling you, you don't deserve to be okay. How dare you think? You selfish little shit. What is wrong with you? You are ego-based. You are hoarding all the good stuff. You are being neglectful. You're not taking care of me, 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 and my, 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 my needs. That's, that's your abusive background talking. That's your PTSD talking. It's hard, I know, to sit and be at peace and enjoy a good cup of tea or coffee. To play with a, a paint by a sticker by number book. To be creative. To walk in nature and feel a sense of joy and peace. To watch the birds. To build something good. To let someone give you money, make you a cake, celebrate an anniversary or a birthday, tell jokes. Like, why are you doing that at a time like this? Because what's the alternative? And how's it going to serve anyone? And let the guilt sink in. Let it, let it be there. Be like, okay, yeah, I see you. Let it sit right beside you. But you can label it unhealthy, illegitimate, and doesn't necessarily get to have a seat at the table, although it has pulled itself up to the table. You don't have to serve it. <laughs> it can be there. So, I sit beside my survivor's guilt. And while I haven't been okay the last couple of days, I've been in bed grieving and allowing it. Yesterday, I got up, took a shower, vacuumed, did two loads of laundry, cooked a really good meal, and today I'm going to be driving an hour and a half north to get me some really good fucking water. And I feel okay today. I'm at peace. There's more rulings coming down. I'm watching rights get taken away in other countries, but instead I'm making this for you and I'm not doom scrolling. Today, no doom scrolling, not today. And there's a couple of content creators that do hilarious jokes that are mindless and <laughs> stupid. And I'm going to watch that, and I'm getting ready to go hold ceremony. I leave in about a week to go to Maine, and I'm planning the European leg of this documentary. I'm moving on because my life is going to continue to move on regardless of what's happening to the, to the peoples and the countries. I still have a responsibility to this meat sack. To this being that, that incarnated here, that wanted a life and a reason, that has purpose. And then I have you guys, and you have somebody. And so living peacefully and laughing, as guilty as it feels, is absolutely paramount. Because how are you... What good is it going to do for you to lose a decade of your life to all this? Who's that going to help and serve when you finally, when, when it gets resolved in some way and we all land somewhere on the other side of this thing in 10 years, 15 years? 
All you're gonna have is regret for every decision you made that continued to take you down the path where you didn't take care of yourself and you doomed and gloomed everything until you were just in an unlivable life situation that was shitty. Versus doing what I'm telling you to do and knowing that you created the best life situation that you could for yourself full of lots of good pictures and experiences and quotes and things that you created and maybe even new ventures you started in the middle of it all. Some of the most amazing inventions and constructs that we enjoy today came out of World War II and shitty experiences. That means some people were not affected or were minimally affected or were deeply, profoundly affected and turned all of that into something good. You don't have to suffer deeply through this to be a good person. The best thing you can do is be okay. And when you suffer, suffer, and then do these things that I've been talking to you about. Y'all, this is so boring and mindless and also entertaining and fun. And I bought some really cool stickers and a, a small little notebook. And I'm making these sort of abstract art forms, pictures out of all these random stickers, just so I can look at them. Find something to do with your hands that's mindless, that you enjoy, that brings you peace. So I want you to know, it's not that I'm oblivious. I am very well aware of the weight that's sitting on me every fucking day. But what you're going to see me doing is moving on because we're all still alive and we're all still here. And we all have stress and panic. And what I want to ask you to do is forward some of my videos to other people that you see are having panic and anxiety. It's so hard to get people to understand that a mushroom really has this much power and it's not a dangerous mushroom and it's one that's easy to use and it's not gonna hurt you and you're not gonna trip in really small doses and it doesn't make you a bad person and it's perfectly legal. Like you have really good powerful medicine here that you actually, the world really needs right now to put you on the track to do the stuff in this video, to take care of yourself. Like this is the medicine. Share it with people. Help raise us all up. Let's move through this together in a healthy and loving and good way. I didn't say don't be angry. I said focus your anger so that you can settle back into your heart and live through it and continue to find your path and your way and your purpose and, and what you want to make of all of this because something new is going to be built on the other side of this thing. And it's going to be good. I feel the shift and it's a good one. Good things are coming. It's ugly. If you don't like it, don't look. Look toward the future and start building it. Sometimes the first people that are in a new construct in a new area are the ones that are going to be able to benefit the most and create the most beauty, positivity, and change and create the new structure. Find your path in that. Today, like when things are the shittiest and the worst, and they're not, they're gonna get worse. But the worse they get, that just means there's less bullshit to pay attention to. Things are falling away and paving away for a much simpler palette for you to work from to create something. What is your dream? There's never been a better time to create it than when no one's looking because they're all busy doom scrolling and being afraid. There's no better time than when there's less people to muddle in your shit. There's never been a better time than when the need is greatest. When were you supposed to build your dream? Back when everyone was trying to do the same thing? Or maybe it's now. I love you, beautiful people.